The Fushimi Inari Taisha Shrine in Kyoto is most famous for its long rows of vermilion tori gates, nearly 5,000 gates in all. Various temple structures are in front, including the famous Romon Gate, but the main attraction is that vast network of tori gates, which have made Inari one of the most popular destinations in town. Whenever you see the tori gate, you know that uh, this is not a Buddhist temple, but instead it's a Shinto shrine. And this is the main shrine of this particular Shinto sect that's dedicated to the gods of rice and sake. Throughout Japan, there are 40,000 other Inari shrines, but this is the principal one. The Inari shrine is a wonderful Shinto experience. You walk through all of these different gateways along a path that winds through the forest. This is the largest collection of Tori gates anywhere in the world. You could spend one or two hours walking this pathway that extends for almost three miles. The visit you're watching was in early December and so it was not crowded and yes, the temperatures were kind of nippy, but comfortable. And we saw some cats. Notice the steam coming out of their breath. Temperatures in the morning like this were in the 30s. The gates are surrounded by a natural forest and by various small cultivated gardens with some ponds here and there. You can walk all the way up the hillside to the top of Mount Inari, which is about 240 meters high. And you won't get lost, just follow the path, follow the tunnels of Tori Gates. The biggest problem with the Inari Shrine is that it's just too popular. It's being loved to death. Remember, we're traveling in early December when it's very peaceful, quiet, and nearly empty. The crowds during the season, during the day, are phenomenal. There will be probably a thousand people all walking through these gates, so it can get pretty congested. For example, if you look at the comments on TripAdvisor about this temple shrine area, every other comment mentions the crowding, people in the way, people taking pictures, people stopping and talking and kind of interfering with the experience. Now, these people are visiting during the high season and during the middle of the day. So the way to avoid it is come in the off season. As we are, it's December as we're walking around, early December. It's a perfect time to be in Kyoto. Or if you're here in the busy season, come very early. You can come just after sunrise or come very late in the day, just an hour before sunset. And you'll have the added benefit of some extra rich colors and fewer people. The site is especially popular during the New Year's holiday Japan's most important festivity when it attracts nearly 3 million people during the three-day period. Of course, if you enjoy people watching, then this is no problem. You can see it as a bonus. There'll be lots of folks out here appreciating the site, and most of them are Japanese tourists, so it's like an extra bonus for you in that regard. People from throughout Japan love to come to Kyoto and visit these wonderful gardens and shrines. Arrive early and walk through this phenomenal lineup of several thousand tori gates standing next to each other and forming a magical two-mile tunnel through the forest. It's easily reached from the town center by train on either the JR line stopping at Inari Station or the Keihan line to the Fushimi Inari Station. The first shrine was built in the year 711 in a different part of town to the southwest, and then it was relocated here a century later in 816. The main shrine structure was built in the year 1499, and all of the Tory gates were added subsequently over many centuries. Each of these 5,000 Tory gates was donated by a Japanese business and maintained by them, and they put their name on them because the shrine is a patron of business and merchants and manufacturers, but especially of the god of rice and sake. It seems like we're walking around a little bit in circles, and we are. 
Because once you're inside the shrine area, you're walking through the tunnel of these Tory gates, and you can get to the end and then just turn around and walk back through that same tunnel. Or you could continue. It does make a complete loop circuit if you walk all the way up to the top of the hill. But you might not want to go that far, so feel free anytime to just walk in part of the way and then turn around and walk back out the same way that you came in. It's a different experience either way, going uphill or going downhill. <laughs> the vermilion color of the gates is quite dazzling and contrasts delightfully with the green garden setting. There are even a few restaurants in the shrine area, which figures if it's going to take you three hours to walk along every pathway, so you can get some refreshments and especially locally themed dishes such as the Inari Sushi and Kitsune Udon, both of which feature pieces of fried tofu, which was said to be a favorite of the foxes who were some of the gods of this shrine area. This is part of our series on the temples and gardens of eastern Kyoto, the Higashiyama district, and also we'll take you downtown in some of our other videos. Be sure to look for them on our YouTube channel. <laughs>